All right, guys, let me show you what's going on here in my garden with my peppers and uh, what I'm going to do about it. The peppers are too big for the plant. The plants are not big enough and they are touching the ground. All right guys, this here is my bed of giant Marconi peppers. These peppers are just fantastic on the grill. Just cut them in half, take the seeds out, save them of course, <laughs> and throw them on the grill and they are super, super uh, great tasting. The problem with these plants is the plant itself seems like it's too small for the pepper. If you look here, you see the peppers are touching the ground. The majority of them always grow from the middle of the plant on down. And they're touching the ground here. So what happens is, you look in the bucket here, they, they are, like I said, a huge pepper, but the bottoms, you see the bottom that touches the uh, ground starts to rot or the bugs eat it and uh, uh, the bottoms rot because they're touching the ground. It's not that bad because I can just cut that part out. But uh, I, it, that's the problem I'm having here. So uh, next year what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a weed barrier cloth down here that woven uh, bead, weed, weed barrier cloth. Uh, and grow these through there like I did my beans here. That way, if the pepper does touch, it'll touch the uh, weed barrier cloth and not the ground. And hopefully that'll stop them from uh, rotting. But that's the problem I'm having with these. Other than that, they are a great pepper. Okay guys, this here is my watermelon patch, my, my row of watermelons. I have five varieties of melons here, uh, and I got uh, actually three varieties of watermelon and two varieties of cantaloupe and a uh, honeydew, um, yeah, a green honeydew melon at the, at the very end. Some of these are getting ready to pick, and how you tell is when you look at the watermelon, the stem that's coming out of the watermelon, look at that and you'll see a spoon leaf. It looks like a spoon. When that's dried up and shriveled up, that means the watermelon is ready to pick. That's usually uh, correct, but not always. Um, I have one here that is ready to pick, and it is a good size watermelon. Now these are the ancient watermelons from uh, Baker Creek, rareseeds.com, and I'm going to pick this one because it sounds ready. It kind of sounds hollowy on the inside. Yeah, I think she's ready. Yeah. I'm going to enjoy this. <laughs> now these melons, uh, if you know the story behind them, they were discovered way back in the, I don't know if it was late 1918s or early 1920s. Uh, but anyways, uh, they found some seeds in a cave that some Native American Indians left there. And uh, there was some 200 seeds in this little clay vial or whatever, or, or vase or vase, whatever you want to call it. And he, out of the 200, I think he said that 12 germinated. And they were all a crookneck type of melon. And at that time, they, uh, nobody really wanted to buy crooknex so they wanted they wanted these type of watermelons the round ones or oval so he kept growing them and growing them and only picked the ones that were more round and took those seeds and um, used those seeds and eventually they the majority of them ended up being like this but occasionally you will get one that's a crookneck and there's people out there that are saving those seeds to keep those genetics going of how the seeds, uh, how the melon normally used to grow uh, in the Native American Indians, the way they grew it. So it's kind of nice because these, the, ge the genetics in these have not been modified. They're not uh, messed up. You know, they're, they're not super hybrid. They're not even hybridized as far as we know. 
Uh, so these genetics go back, you know, hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of years, we don't know. Um, so a good, true watermelon. So if you watch my other videos, I told you that gardening, of course, is a learning experience. Every year you learn new things. We have so many tomatoes. I put out extra tomatoes because I wanted to make sure that I had enough tomatoes to make tomato sauce uh, for this year. So I planted a lot of extra tomatoes. Um, and boy, did I get tomatoes this year. Even though I got hit by a early blight fungus on my tomato plants, um, it still put out a lot of tomatoes. You can see here, we just got tons and tons of tomatoes. We have to harvest this today or tomorrow. They're, they're getting very ripe. We've harvested already, three. I weighed everything, 303 pounds already out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these rows here um, of tomatoes. 303 pounds and out of it we made 15 half gallon two quart um, jars. No, 15 and then the second batch was another five so that's 20 half gallons of tomato sauce plus 31 or two of the one quart jars. Um, and I have probably that much more to pick <laughs> on, on this yet. So I overplanted, but that's, that's a good thing. I had to end up buying, I ordered online, a big, one of those big stainless steel uh, boilers uh, with the propane uh, torch underneath it or the jet torch or whatever they call it but anyways uh, it that was an 80 82 quart pot is what I ordered and um, it'll it should be in tomorrow so I'm kind of waiting on that uh, so we can process these tomatoes probably maybe Sunday or something but, so we can process these and we'll probably end up having another pretty close to 300 pounds. Uh, I'm almost sure of it. The dilemma, the problem I'm having now is I searched every grocery store. I searched Walmarts. I searched all these stores that carry canning, either, uh, canning jars. And everybody is out, out of them. I only found this one little package of quart jars with the regular mouth on it and I said you know what it's better than nothing we have some at home but we I don't I'm not sure if we have enough I, I did order some from Amazon some half gallons but risky when you're ordering online those glass jars because they usually arrive broke so I took a chance I ordered some uh, from Amazon and some of the reviews weren't that great on it but you know what am I going to do I can't find them anywhere. Lesson learned. Remember, every year you learn something. As soon as the season's over with, pretty much, and they start restocking the stores, I am going to buy as many as I possibly can. So I'm not going to run out again. All right, guys, let me show you my corn. So this is the first time I'm growing this variety here. I have uh, three rows, one, two, three of G90 and I have two rows here and another two on this side of a variety called candy corn. The corn kernels are smaller on the candy corn. Um, so they are ready to pick. Uh, let's see we'll get this one here. Now most likely they're gonna have earworms in here. Um, I grow these organically. I don't put nothing on there. Um, I could put, I hear people putting mineral mineral oils in here to keep the, uh, suffocate the, uh, um, the, the earwig, or the earwig, the earworm. Um, there are some types of dust, BT, and some other something else you can put on there that would help. Um, but, um, I'm, like I said, I grow these naturally. 
and yeah it looks like we got we got one little guy here I don't know where he's at is he in there uh, no he's vacated okay yeah he's out he vacated but anyways when you're growing corn organically most likely it's gonna look like this when they're ready to pick uh, that's when they get in there and they just start eating away at the very tops and they work their way down so you don't want to leave them on the uh, stalks too long but um, the rest of it is just beautiful I mean that is a beautiful ear of corn right there the top and we just cut that off and then we cook them but the rest of it is beautiful man absolutely beautiful and I was worried about pollination but it looks like every single kernel there was pollinated that is a beautiful cob of corn there oh I love corn did I tell you I love corn <laughs> Oh, one thing that my wife found out, and I don't know too much about it right now. She's researched it. These hairs here, whenever you're, what do you call it, shucking your uh, corn, take this off. These hairs, not the black ones that were, for, you know, the, the outside ones, but the ones underneath like these here, say, she saves them, okay? And we dry them. And what you do is once you once they're dried like in a dehydrator, once they're dried, you can boil them and make like a tea out of it. And what it's supposed to do is be supposed to be very, very healthy for your kidneys, this tea. Um, there's something in here that's supposed to be very good for your kidneys. It cleans them out. It, it rejuvenates them. I don't know what it is. I haven't done any research, but that's what she said. And, um, and that's what I'm sticking with. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, do some research on it. The, these hairs... Uh, dehydrated and then boiled um, I'm not sure if you can boil them fresh but from what I understand you dehydrate them I guess you save them for later store it that way and then you put some in water boil it and it's supposed to be very good for a tea for your kidneys so good to know so I am going to be enjoying wonderful a wonderful dinner tonight and for many many more nights to come uh, or many more dinners to come, I should say, um, until I stuff my face with corn because I absolutely love corn. Some butter on there, some, a little bit of salt, and uh, I'm in corn heaven. <laughs> All right, so that variety I just showed you was a G90 corn. The corn kernels are pretty good size. The ear of corn's pretty good size too. This variety I'm gonna uh, show you here is called candy corn. Uh, Let's see. This one looks pretty good. This here is called candy corn. And it looks like the, the ear. Yeah, they're eating this one too, the worms. But other than that, it looks pretty darn good. Okay, that one was a bicolor. This one is not. This one's just yellow. Is that a beauty or what? Other than the top that was ate out, ate, eaten out, we just cut that off. And the rest is going to be enjoyed by yours truly. But, uh, yeah, it looks like it pollinated really nice all the way around. Beautiful. And again, just the very top. We cut that off and devour the rest. Nice looking corn. I think I'm going to grow it again next year. Uh, last year I grew a uh, type that was called uh, Incredible. And the taste was incredible. It was fantastic, the, the taste. The problem was the, um, the corn only grew, the stalk only grew maybe, maybe my height, six foot tall or so. Um, the corn itself, it was okay, you know, the size of it. But the taste was very good. It was very sweet corn. Uh, but the stalks are very small. These here, these are growing seven, eight feet. The ones back there have got to be eight feet tall. Um, they're, they're very, very tall. Uh, and you get more ears of corn when they're taller, of course. Um, but anyways, the, the incredible variety was good. Good, good flavor if you want to grow those. Uh, but this one here is a uh, candy corn, it's called. It's supposed to be very sweet, hence the name candy. Um, 
and that's spelt with a K candy anyways. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to grow this variety again and the G90 next year. So for my first year for growing this variety of corn, um, I think I did okay. Um, it's been very, very dry here for the last few weeks, although the last couple of days we've had about an inch and three quarters of rain according to my rain gauge. So I don't know if that was enough to sweeten up the corn a bit, I don't know. But as far as the variety, the, uh, uh, the G90 and the candy corn, uh, it seems to grow very good here. Uh, I do have my uh, irrigation system here. I do water it um, when I see that the ground's getting pretty dry. Um, but overall, I did pretty good. I got uh, this wheelbarrow full of uh, candy corn. There's still a few more here and there. Um, and this here, these four buckets and what's on the ground there is the G90 and there's still more. My wife's still picking more uh, back there. But I am gonna eat very well <laughs> for quite a while. The thing about corn, which is so cool, you can really never overplant. And the reason is, I mean, you can only eat so much fresh, right? Uh, because you got to pick them and they all, you know, um, they get ready to harvest all at one time. So you can only eat so much. Beautiful thing about corn is you can dry them right on the cob and um, take the kernels off the cob once they're dry and you can grind them into a flour. You make cornbread and uh, you can enjoy corn that way. So in the future, we are going to plant more corn. I gotta make more room in this orchard here to uh, grow more corn. Uh, that, that, this is a crop that really everybody should be growing because like I said, not only can you eat it fresh, you can also freeze it and dry it for seed of course, or dry it and uh, make flour out of it. And you can make uh, all kinds of recipes in cornbread. All right, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, this is a, just a little update of what's going on here with my corn. Hope this video helps you out in, in deciding what type of uh, vegetables you can you want to grow. Um, so again, thank you for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in the next video.